Well, good morning. Welcome back to another Clayton Schick Outdoors video production. I'm Clayton Schick and this is the outdoors. Even though it's so cheesy, it's just so fun to do. I think it's because it's so cheesy. But anyways, we are of course fishing today. Something a little bit different than the last couple videos. Right lately I did um, video at Rowan's Ravine, stayed in a tent at a wonderful campsite there. For the next little couple videos, I am at Rickers at Lake of the Prairies, which is a border lake between Saskatchewan and Manitoba. One of my favorite lakes, grew up fishing here lots. My parents have a seasonal campsite, not this camper, we're just parked we'll have the boat in somebody else's lot right now, but a couple down there, which we are going to spend the next few days. I say we because I have Cindy with me again. I chose Lake of the Prairies because I have her and Lake of the Prairies is a fishery where you can catch a lot of fish. And this is a little tip for anybody who wants to get into guiding. Know your clientele. I want her to catch fish. Last Mountain was a tougher fishery for her, especially when we were there, the bite was pretty tough. And it, it's tough for her. So out here, the couple hours that she does get out fishing, we're gonna catch some fish and she's gonna have a good time. She's gonna use a jig and a leech like she likes and probably put a bunch of fish in the boat. It's gonna be awesome. But right now it's six in the morning and I kind of get to do my own thing a little bit first. It is windy out there, but we're still gonna go have a look around. We're gonna talk today about a little bit about the Humminbird chart select maps, which is one of them they have done at Lake of the Prairies. There's multiple lakes all over Manitoba and Ontario and of course the states that they have done. I don't even know how many in Manitoba now. I'll put the number here, but they're adding more and more every year. They have a bunch of lakes done in the Duck Mountains, near Roblin there, the Goose Lakes. Uh, they just recently did Lake of the Woods, which is on the Ontario Manitoba border. Bunch of different awesome, awesome lakes. And it's such a good feature. Like when I first got this map chip out here, I'm not gonna lie and I'm not gonna use this word loosely, game changer. It just gave me the ability to find places that I didn't know existed. Like literally little humps in the middle of the lake, etc. There's that word again, I know. But yes, let's get the boat in the water. One of the videos the next few days, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a video about how I dock the boat alone or launch the boat alone. But today, because of the wind, I'm just gonna put it in. And we are going to go fishing. Long intro, let's go water now. So I'm out on the water and yes, it's windy. But the good thing about Lake of the Prairies is there's almost always somewhere to hide and catch fish at the same time. So the auto chart map here, chart chart select maps from Humminbird. It's a map you download. I think it's like $27 for Lake of the Prairies. It is literally unreal. So right now I'm at Rickers here. This is Rickers, the Rickers launch up here. I'm at a, a private launch. It's just for the campground users. So if you rent a campsite, this is where you get a launch from. But if you don't, you're launching over here, which is a free site and it's awesome. But right now I have the map set up for a shallow water highlight of four feet or less. And then I have a, an area selected from, I think it's 20 feet or 21 feet to like 30 feet or something like that, which will highlight the river channel for me. And look at this. This map is honestly unreal. There's a little deep pocket in here, this hole. The fish could be anywhere, like anywhere. But because of the map, it gives you some more ideas to hide. This is a really popular spot here, the old road. You always see boats in there. Something like that will let you stay right on top of the structure. Let's see, we'll go over here, up to the old road. I've ice fished literally right in here before too. Walked out from the launch, come out in there, ice fished. There's so many spots, so many opportunities. This map, honestly, for $27 is mind blowing. Oh, waypoints, just ignore those. Those aren't any good, etc. More deep, deep pockets and stuff like that. You can change that all for sure, but look at, it. it's just unreal. Very popular area, the Cupar Flats in here. There's just, it's such a good map. Like they've nailed it in that sense. They only have from the Roblin Bridge south all the way to the Assisippi Dam. I know they have plans eventually to do the northern side of it, but right now it's just the, the south side they have of it so i can imagine this wind is annoying as i'm talking into it and i don't have my back to it i apologize for that but now this has been a really long introduction we really need to go fishing walleyes is the target right now 
I do, maybe you saw in the background there, I do have some pike rods with me. So at some point on this trip, we're going to target some pike as well. But I think I wanna go put some fish in the boat to start with. I think I'm finally set up to fish. We're gonna start with the old jig and a leech. I'm not running the hummingbird camera yet, just for the fact that I'm not moving at the moment in terms of I've got the talon down. The talon is the talon is so amazing on like the prairies, I'm not gonna lie. There's so many times I fish in less than 10 feet of water. Like even this late in the season, it's so ooh, a little wavy. It's so good. It's so good. Okay, let's see what happens. Like I say, I'm gonna talk this big game about oh I'm just gonna put a couple fish in the boat, no problem. And then move on to something else. Yeah. Watch me not even catch a fish all day long. Oh, bite first kick. Okay, never mind. That was too easy. I think it's very big, but that was, <laughs> that's typical Lake of the Prairies right there. Like typical Lake of the Prairies. That's a nice fish too. Like that would have been a pretty good tournament fish. As I'm gonna boat flip them, I shouldn't be. Yeah. <laughs> like that's honestly, that's typical Lake of the Prairies. Well, the fish is warm fish i say that the fish is warm compared to the air temperature typical lake of the prairies first cast nice i don't know 17 incher i do want to keep some fish this morning i think because i'm going to do some catch and cook so uh i'm going to measure him quick to make sure he's not 17 and three quarters which i'm almost positive he's not and he's going to go in the live well <laughs> two casts two fish like and it's a nice fish actually a really nice fish I can't, but I can't boat flip this fish. Nice one. That did not take long at all to put a decent walleye in the boat. Don't get me wrong. These aren't giants. These aren't, uh, these aren't giants. But there's something. There's something. That one would be probably too big to keep be honest I'm gonna give him a quick measure I'm not keeping him no matter what but he would be probably yeah that fish is over the fish is just over 19 inches the lake of the prairies has a slot size 17 and three quarters to 28 inches which is good those are breeders I'll take care of those fish there we go Change my rods just to something a little bit longer for when I'm pitching jigs out. It's a nice fish. I've caught quality fish this morning. I haven't caught a pile. I've got three in like no time. But hey, I say I haven't caught a pile. It's probably because I went 15 minutes without a bite. But another nice fish. This one would be definitely too big to keep again. Went to a little bit longer rod for pitching jigs out. The 6.3 that I was using. Oh, that's a nice fish. Nice fish. Really nice fish. The six foot three that I was using the when I vertical jig with a lot. When you start to pitch the jigs out, it's a little bit too short for that. But this, oh, quality, quality, quality fish right there. It's a quality walleye, like a like a twenty incher type of thing. Not not a jumbo. Sorry, buddy. He took it. There he goes. Some nice fish cruising through here right now. Lots of times you come to Lake of the Prairies, you catch a lot of like small fish, but this is uh, another quality fish. This one might actually be the right size to keep. We'll see here. Chunky guy, chunky. No easy, get a quick measure on you. It's only 17, but it's like, chunky i think i'm keeping two fish today probably this will be my second one. Oh, there's a fish on my rod look at that he's still there scotty can catch him too scotty can catch him too <laughs> i'm just gonna go back to my vertical rod again because i thought i was gonna fish vertical again and uh put a different color 
jig on and uh, I smoked a fish in the rod holder and a nice one too. Too big to keep. Quality, quality fish this morning. Like insane for quality wise. Like every fish is over 17 inches. That one's probably 19 ish probably. Sometimes fishing's easy. Lake of the Prairies can make you look so good. Like so good. It's honestly, it's like, it's such an easy fishery in terms of catching a pile of fish. Like, but it's so fun to take family to or kids to because it's like they're gonna catch fish and all i'm doing you guys little jig and leech this is a special jig from a friend that i just met recently i can't really say anything yet until i talk to him to see if he uh wants me to even say anything because i don't think he's selling jigs but if you watch this video jay i'll just say jay and we'll say your whole name we could sell your jigs, I'm pretty sure, on uh, this channel for you pretty quick. I know a lot of people that would like that. It's quality, quality. The old jig and a leech, you just hook them right, the leech right on the end, right, even if you can in a sucker, I don't know if that's really gonna show up very well. Right near the end there, little bait button on there. And then you just let him swim. Sometimes I put him in the water first, just to make sure he's swimming good and they're not wrapped around the jig. And then I'll drop him drop them down right now i said we're gonna fish vertical again because i got them right below the boat i'm spot locked and 13 feet of water i did start the day with a talon in about nine eight feet unfortunately i only have a 12 foot talon but the spot lock once you get a little bit deeper like the, then then the shallow water it works pretty good i don't like using a spot lock in the shallow water where i can use the talon just excuse me just because the less noise that much better like if you can throw out a, an anchor, if you don't have a talon, when you're in the shallower water, say less than less than 10 feet even, an anchor is gonna probably be your best bet. Now, if you're gonna be moving around a lot, obviously you're gonna want the spot lock, but if you're ever gonna find a spot, you're like, I know I'm gonna sit here for the next hour, or you catch a couple of fish, and like, okay, I'm gonna sit out here for a bit. You can't beat silent. You can't beat silent. As soon as you start to get like above that, 20 feet, I don't mind fishing with the, the big motor at all. And like, like I do a lot of my videos where I'm sharp shooting. A little bit of wind. I think I'm gonna catch a couple more fish here. And then I'm gonna go toss some blades around a little bit, spinners, and look for some pike a little bit, I think. I wish I could do a video, like you have those, I don't know, anybody read those books back in the day where it was like, choose your adventure and it was like, if you like to do this, go to page 34. If you'd like to do this, go to page 78. I like to have like a video like that. It's like, okay, if you want to see me pike fish, click yes. If you want to see me walleye fish, click this. It would be so cool. You see you guys would decide my day. My first little guy of the day. My first little guy. How about I give him my leech back, buddy? Got my leech back? Oh, my leech back. He's still alive. Yes. First little guy of the day. Well, you know what? I want to just... I want to cast for pike for a bit. I know I could slam a bunch of walleye. I caught, I don't even know, five, six in no time. But I want to throw a booker tail around for some pike for a bit and some shallows. See if it can catch any... See if there's a possibility of maybe doing more pike fishing in the future. Okay, let's get set up for that. I'm gonna change cameras around a little bit and fish out of the front of the boat for this. And I think we're gonna spend the rest of the morning pike fishing. Yeah, I like it. Okay, plan of attack will be to kind of cast around, lift the talon up, drift a little bit, move myself around the trolling motor, just cover some, cover some water. I'm gonna cast over my shoulder that the camera's not. I can cast both ways. When you're reading with your right hand, you should cast over your left shoulder, right? But we're gonna cast over this shoulder so I don't, so I don't nail the camera. Okay, let's go spin some bucktails. Let's go spin some bucktails. How many casts are it gonna take to catch a 40 inch pike? Cast one. Nice thing about a booker tail is you can really slow roll them, meaning you can pretty reel pretty slow and just get those blades turning or you can crank on it and get it moving there's like 
you want to feel that resistance though, right? You want to make sure your spinner blade's turning. That's the biggest thing for sure. I'm going to take advantage of my leaning seat here and I'm going to fish. I'm going to fish it. I'm going to fish it. Oh, it feels good. Oh, some weeds. There we go. There we go. Nice. Yes, this feels so good right now. <laughs> he's not that big, but he's a nice fish. Come on, get out of those weeds, buddy. Got to keep the pressure on. I'm fighting the weeds and the fish. That's a nice, that's a nice pike though. That's nice. That is awesome. Good morning. A couple nice walleye. I don't know, we can hand land you. We hand land pretty much all my fish up north too, so. Nice fish. Nice fish. That's a good one. Not a giant, but it's nice. Barbless hooks come out easy. Show them off quick to the camera. Nice, like, I don't know, 33, 34 inch fish. But a good start. Good start. She goes. So cool. That's what I'm using here. Little uh, Booker tail, not little, I guess, but a size. What do they call these? A size 700 series, I think they are. No. 500 series, 700 series is the next, next blade up. 500 series, Booker tail. A little bit like these ones too, they got a little bit of flash in them here, this orange. And then has a little bit bigger of a hook too. I'm barbless of course, cause I am in a barbless lake, but. Very cool, that took only like 15 casts, maybe 20. I had three follows, one other swipe at it. Like this is pretty good for the first spot. We're like really good. There isn't really a lot of science to what I'm doing right now. I'm literally just casting a big five foot open flat. You could troll around here and probably do maybe even better than you could casting time in the water, but I prefer to cast it. I'm just, just fan casting, just drifting along here. Like I said, five feet going like a clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock all around, just fan casting, working the water. If I see maybe some weed sticking out or something, I'll try to make some more casts towards that area a little bit. But it's really just, I'm just drifting a big area and I'm just fan casting. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, it's coming right at me. There we go. Yes. Telling down. Yes, little guy, little guy. Come out of a little clump of weeds right here, I think, too. Awesome. Fish two of the day. Or fish two, fish pike of, second pike of the day, anyway. Okay, I'm gonna clip him right there. Oh, my only request is anybody that comes to these reservoir lakes and does fish these pike, take good care of them. Have good equipment. I'll go through the tools that you need for these things, but long needle nose pliers like this come in super handy. Don't use your tiny little walleye forceps. Okay, I even have to bring you in the boat. I'll grab you right here, unhook you. Show you off to the head camera quick, probably like a 28-ish, 20, 29-ish. Let you go. Cool, okay, I said I was gonna cover tools. We'll cover it quick. Long needle nose pliers. These are kind of not quite a 45 degree angle here, but they're pretty handy. They're stainless steel. These are uh, offshore angler ones. I'll put the link in the description below. A good pair of hook cutters, any musky, per a musky person will tell you to, hook cutters, a file. And these I hardly use, but if you get a lure deep and you're not really familiar with how to take pike off, these right here will be jaw spreaders. And these ones got a nice curve on the outside of the mouth so it doesn't put any pressure and doesn't poke their poke their mouth type of thing or doesn't put a hole through it. So those ones work really good. I will put links to all of these. This I'm gonna get at Pokies for sure. The file comes from Thorn Brothers. This is from Nipex itself. And then this is, like I said, offshore angler. So four different places. Also a big landing net if you're gonna take any pictures or measure a fish and then I have a musky bump board there to measure the fish if I am going to do any measurements or stuff like that. But for the most part, if I'm gonna do pictures with the fish 
or measure them, they're going to be in that landing net for sure. I'm not going to let them flop in the bottom of the boat. They're going to stay in the net, in the water. Take care of our resources, people. Ugh. I'm nice. I just, I'm nice. I swear, I'm nice. I just get frustrated when I see photos of fish flopping in the boat or there's no reason to measure every single fish you catch for a month straight either, you know, like that just kind of, it's kind of ridiculous to be honest. Just ridiculous. You don't have to measure every fish or weigh every fish. The odd one here and there doesn't hurt anything, but don't do every one. It's just not cool. Oh. <laughs> okay, well this is gonna bring up another pretty important cool point. I was about to lift my lure out of the water. I already had my bail clicked and my thumb on the, the button because and that's the biggest one of the day. Because <laughs> I was about to cast again and this fish came out from underneath the boat and smashed me. So we are going to talk about keeping your lure in the water all the way till the end of your cast. That's a nice fish. That's a good one. That's that's more what we're looking for right there. And there's a little technique I call the check mark for pike. Musky anglers do figure eights. Pike are a little bit more weary of a boat. So I do what's called the check mark. We'll explain that right after we land this fish. Unreal. I can't believe that. I literally already had my thumb clicked on the bale. Nice fish. Nice fish. Oh, easy girl, easy girl. Easy, 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 easy. That's a nice fish. What it is, that's like a, it's probably 40 inches. Probably pretty close, pretty close. Yeah. 40 and a quarter maybe. Okay, I already showed you off once with the camera. So we'll get you back. 40 and a quarter. Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. There she goes. There she goes. So what's the check mark, Clayton? Well, straighten your booker tail first. I'll show you. So really important to keep your lure in the water the whole way of the boat. Too many times I see people, they're casting and they get a boat, say 15 feet from the boat and they just do this. They skip it across the top and they recast. You gotta keep it in the water all the way in. Musky guys always will tell it all the time. Pike are the same way. Pike are a little bit more leery of the boat. So I don't go into a full figure eight. I do kind of just a check mark. So what it is, is I'm coming in with my bait, it's spinning. I'm slowing it down a little bit if I have to, but I'm keeping that blade turning. I'm getting to almost my leader and I'm pulling it and I'm doing like this. When I caught that fish, no word of a lie, I was right here already. I was here. I started the check mark, what I can always do. I click my thumb so I can come up and cast again right away. And as I'm finishing my check mark, I got smoked by a 40 inch pike. I pull that lure out of the water too soon. I don't catch that fish. Check mark, the old check mark. I teach my clients that up north all the time. Okay, let's go hit. Let's go hit one more spot quick on the way home. And uh, let's go, let's go visit Cindy at the camper, get the camper and see what she's up to. Pretty fun morning, not gonna lie. Pretty fun morning. Well, I'm off the water for a little bit. I've been relaxing here at my parents' wonderful camper. Thank you very much, Glenn and Lisa Schick. This is, this is the dream right now. We literally have a place for ourselves, it feels like. It's very little people. It looks like some rain coming at some point, but hopefully to get Cindy on the water eventually, right, Cindy? Yes, we're headed to Buckets, which is the store at Rickers there. I'll do a little bit of a video there of what they have to offer. They're open pretty much all week, I believe. Quite long hours too, and they have lots there, including slushies, which I don't know if we're getting, are we getting a slushie today? 
we are getting a slushy. We're also going for some of their food. I think they have like some mushrooms and other stuff like that. So I wish that we can get ice cream too at some point. Mm. Oh, ice cream in the slushy. I think that's called, uh, I forget what that's called. There's a name for it though. We put the ice cream in the slushy. But fishing this morning was awesome. I'm sure I have most of the walleye fishing on video. Probably won't show all the clips because I know my mic went dead at some point there. And then transition over to pike fishing, which was awesome. I'm super excited about that because I wanted to focus on some pike in some of the southern lakes for a little bit here a little, for a little while already. So at some point we're gonna get Cindy out. She's cold though right now, I can tell. And tomorrow though, it's supposed to be a little bit nicer. But today, so far, we will get back on the water at some point, whether it's myself alone or hopefully for Cindy in the evening, but we gotta have a fun day yet of around the campsite. I think we're gonna cook up some steaks, etc. There's a word again. Every time I th use that word, now I'm rambling. Okay, let's go to the store. Golf cart life. Golf cart, how, how far is it, 1.8K? Uh, no, it's 0.9. 0.9. Point Point nine. Cindy says nine kilometers from the no. campsite to here. That's why we took the golf cart. Nine. nine, did you hear that? We nine kilometers. We could be walking, but why? We have the golf cart, golf cart life. So this is buckets. So you can see there's a sign above me somewhere. Right there, buckets. Buckets, yes. Nice little store here, we got a bunch of little goodies and stuff inside so we're gonna go in and we are going to we're gonna go have something to eat aren't we there's store hours right there bucket lake of the prairies sunday eight 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 to ten eight to ten holy cow dine-in patio area takeout Ooh, and here's oh and they got a menu right there too look at that what are you having cindy i know you're having you're having deep fried mushrooms knowing you right probably yes okay Probably a so we are getting some wings and some mushrooms and this is their little fishing aisle. We got bait, which is nice. Not a lot left though, fishing's good. Night crawlers, some fish crisp, marshmallows for the schmores. Yes, lots of different spinner options and whatnot. Let's see, okay Cindy, pick one thing out on the wall that you would use for walleyes at the lake. What would you use with all the fishing you've done with me? So pick one thing out. Pick something that's the prettiest. Of course. She's oh she's leaning towards the jigs. She's used jigs lots here with me. So what would you put on there? I mean, you're looking for jigs for sure I can tell. You'd probably use leeches then wouldn't you? Pretty close, a little bit smaller though. We're using something a little bit smaller. Oh, so do you go into there. Something like this? There you go, that looks right up your alley oh, right there. One. That one right there. That's what Cindy would pick. That's a pretty good choice. Mm -hmm. And you put what, leeches on there? No, you would. Oh, I would put the, <laughs> no, she's, she corrected me. She <laughs> wouldn't put the leeches on there. I would put the leeches on there. She's right. And there's the good old Roblin Bridge. If you ever come to Lake of the Prairies and you're not sure where to fish, you can always fish by the bridge. We've got our food. It looks amazing. Cindy's got mushrooms. And a slushy. slushy. We got a root beer slushy. How cool is that? Root beer slushy. And now we're uh, living the golf cart life again here. Going back to the camper. It looks like rain's coming. And if it does rain, we won't be fishing today. We'll be cuddled up in the camper watching movies and whatever. This is right up my alley right now. This is the path. Cindy almost got hit today on the path by an old lady on a, in a car. Said, you can't trust anybody, you gotta be careful. So we're enjoying our day as it continues. Stopped out here, it's a beautiful Roblin Bridge area. They have a little scavenger hunt here you can do for a seasonal camper. I'm not sure what you win, but I know it's for something there. It's a prize for the family winner, courtesy of Buckets and Rickers. Scavenger hunt, let's go. You betcha. We having a contest who finds the most? Um, Push it up there. Probably shouldn't because I'll win. Oh, let's do it. Well, the scavenger hunt has been fun. We have, we have found quite a few of them, actually. I found most. You, I found most of them. Cindy's trying to take credit for all the stuff I've done. Typical girl thing. No, it's been pretty even for the most part. I find one, she finds one. She's found a couple pretty tricky ones, though. We have about four or five left yet to find. 
But I think we're probably gonna go prep some supper, whether we eat earlier or later, we're not sure. Still not really nice out for fishing for, for Cindy. It's kind of gloomy and windy. We'll see, we might sneak out for a bit, but if not, at least I've caught some pike today. That's all I wanted was to catch a big pike and I already achieved that on the first day. But we're gonna be going for bigger. We're bigger, right? Right? I'm gonna fish for bigger or you are? I am. You are. You already got your prize. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny about that? You are a prize. I am a prize. Well, we'll go prep some dinner, maybe find some more scavenger hunt items on the way. Oh, things are good. Cindy is uh, really into this whole scavenger hunt thing. She is, she's like, maybe it was over there or maybe it was here. She's so competitive, she's so into it. I'm not making fun of you, I'm laughing with you. Yeah, anyways, look at, it's starting to get nice out. So we are having an earlier supper right now. We're doing the steaks and Cindy did up some potatoes and carrots in a little tray. So we got this going on right now. We're pretty lucky because of the whole COVID situation. The Keg Steakhouse had some steaks that they were selling when it first happened. And this is what we have left, two tenderloins right there. Thanks, Ray, for the hookup. <laughs> Our uh, girl there, or Cindy's girl, I call her my girl too, because, well, you step into a situation, she's also my girl right now, hooked us up with some steaks. So we're enjoying it because of her, so thank you. I'm having mine rare, medium rare, and Cindy's is having hers medium-ish. And the potatoes, like I said, there too. Potatoes, baby carrots, butter, and dill weed. And then actual dill, right? Yeah, I stole from the neighbors. Yeah, we stole dill from the neighbors. They said we could, it's all good. So that's what we're doing. We're having steak, potatoes, and then fishing. What's in their flower pot? Maybe that's one of the... Cindy still, she's like literally looking around right now for scavenger hunting. It's all she's focused on. It's okay. Look, there's bird it's houses. okay. It's okay. We're gonna win. <laughs> it's yeah. all. It's all fun. That's scary. Finished product: steak, potatoes, steak. Weird-looking green stuff. Not sure what that is. Kidding. It's a salad right next to the Pepsi. That's all we got for dressing. Now Italian dressing. It is what it is. Yummy. We're gonna eat this. Then we're gonna go fishing. We are officially headed out on the lake. It's gonna be good, it's gonna be fun. Actually here, in case this guy watches this. <laughs> we are officially headed out on the lake for some walleyes. You gonna catch some fish, Cindy? I'm going to, are you? Pretty cocky, I like it. You want to have a bet? Who catches the most fish? Okay. What I are we? Have to put my leeches on. Oh, what are we betting? Um, how about a nice foot massage? Foot massage, whoever catches most fish. For my sore feet. <laughs> you think you're gonna win? Yeah. I'm. She doesn't realize I'm gonna take this pretty serious. That means a foot massage. I'm gonna crush you. Okay. Good Next, we'll be on the lake fishing. It's 9:45. You win, you win. Cindy wins, she's getting a foot massage. Our fishing was not hot and heavy tonight at all. It was very slow, but sometimes that's just the way it goes. But Cindy did win, so it's all that really matters. That's right. <laughs> it's all that matters to her anyway. It is what it is. So that'll wrap up this little video probably a pretty long video I'm sure by the time I edit it with uh, the morning with the walleye fishing the pike fishing the scavenger hunt everything we did so thank you for watching and uh, as always get outside get outside <laughs>